Have you ever heard the term super soil and wanted to understand what that was? Well, this is the video for you because we're going to show you our version of super soil. Hey folks, welcome back to the Rock and Sea Homestead. My name's Lance, I wanna welcome you to our channel and today we are making some super soil, uh, a batch of super soil. We have a couple of our, uh, our self-watering tubs that we're gonna fill up for some flowers, some uh, pollinating flowers that uh, we've been growing, some zinnias, and it's way past time we need to get these things planted. So uh, we got the tubs all fixed up, now we just have to do a batch of super soil and we figured we'd bring you guys along and show you guys how we do it. All right, so I have a big tarp that I'm gonna build this stuff on. First thing is, is just regular peat moss. This is a three cubic feet bell of peat moss. And I'm just gonna cut this open. And then I'm just gonna spread it out. And you see that it's pretty chunky in here. I just like to kind of get it spread out a little bit. So when we start adding the extra stuff and we just layer this stuff on, it'll all be kind of easier to mix. All right, so the next ingredient that we're gonna put is called black cow. It's this black cow manure. It has like 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 on the uh, fertilizer scale. Really, this is mainly intended for uh, filler and it's kind of sandy. It does have some, uh, of course, some nutrients and those kind of things, has some manure in it, but it's kind of sandy. So it kind of gives it a, when it all gets kind of mixed up, it kind of helps that drain some, but it still gives it a little bit of a fertilizer and you need two bags and this is one bag is one cubic feet so you're putting in two cubic feet and I just try to mix it and kind of get it around places because we're gonna hand mix this here in a minute okay on to the next one all right so our next ingredient is gonna be perlite and it's kind of a little small, uh, they remind me of little foam balls, like star foam. I don't think it's star foam. But um, what it does is it allows that soil to not get as compacted. It kind of helps it keep loose. And we have three of these eight quart bags. It seems like a lot, but when we start mixing in all this stuff we're mixing in, it goes, it doesn't seem to be an overabundance of it. So we still got quite a bit to mix in here on this super soil. But I like to kind of layer it all together like this, kind of like a big lasagna, right? You're adding in this ingredients, this ingredients, and then this one, and then we'll mix it all up at the end. All right, so the next ingredient in this big lasagna here is water storing crystals. And it's gonna be two cups. And these things are kind of what's, kind of in diapers. That water storing gel that's in diapers, that's what this does. And it's funny when you get a fresh batch in these beds and it rains for the first time, these suckers plump up and they turned about that big. They are massive. So when you think how small these little crystals are and actually how big they actually get, I mean, these things are super tiny. It's like a grain of salt, like a coarse ground salt. And they get huge, almost like a, almost like a quarter size. So, all right, now to the next step. All right, so the next thing is oyster shells. This is the same thing that I feed my chickens. Again, it's, this is a good uh, calcium additive. And it's gonna be three cups. 
Now the, uh, the, the recipe is going to be down below in our descriptions if you need it. But this is what this is for. It's for calcium. So if you've ever grown like tomatoes and had uh, the bottom of them kind of look rotty or didn't turn out very, very well or same thing with like squash or zucchini, it's called blossom in rot. That's usually caused by a calcium deficiency. So having some good calcium in there and this stuff will break down slowly over time will help out. All right, so the next ingredient is going to be Epsom salt. So this is the same thing that you'd find in your, like in your pharmacy, like you would use for soaking in a bathtub or whatever. I would just recommend getting the uh, non-flavored or non-scented type. And it's going to be two cups. And this is a magnesium product. That's a big chunk here. And... Um, so that's, what's, that's what this is adding into the mixture. All right. And then our next one is gonna be pelleted lime. Again, two cups of these. And this just helps with the pH of the mix. And we got this mix uh, from Bumblebee Junction two or three years ago, and we've used it religiously since then. And it has been awesome for us. All right, so the next two things are bone mill and blood mill. And we're using a two to one ratio. So two blood or two bone to one blood. And these are super hard to find this year. Not for sure why. And again, I just layer it on. And now we got our, our bone here. And I got one more of these. All right, now to the next step. All right, so we have two more ingredients. One of them is borax. It's a very small, minute, and it's actually what we're looking for is really the boron that's in it, but it's only like a tablespoon. And so I just put a little bit in my hand and just kind of sprinkle it over there. And then that will all get activated as we mix it up. All right, so our last ingredient here is just garden soil. You can find this in a different varieties of, of manufacturers. I usually, usually try to get organic, the cheapest one I can get. And I want, was it uh, five, five and a half uh, cubic feet of it? 5.2, something like that. So really, these are two, two cubic feet. Since I don't wanna have one that's half open, I'll probably just mix in all three and just be good with that. But, and so on this, I just kind of put this over on top. All right, so now since we have all the ingredients in here, now we're gonna start mixing this up. And is when you can start seeing it all kind of come together, you know, you lose some of this darkish of this and some of this real light peat moss brown kind of gets a little darker. So you can kind of see that everything really starts mixing up pretty well. And I just try to break up any big chunks. And I'm not worrying if I get dirty up to my elbows because it's just one of those jobs. So we got all of the soil mixed up, as you can tell, and it really is a nice kind of loomy, real soft, airy soil and packed with nutrients. And like I said, we have grown multiple things with and without it. And every time we grow something with the super soil, it's just that much better. 
I don't know, a couple years ago, we grew some onions in a patch that had some and some that didn't. And the onions that were without got about that tall. The ones that did have super soil were about that tall. So it does make a difference. Hopefully you guys uh, figured out what super soil was and hopefully you like our version of it. Like I said, the uh, recipe will be down in, in the description. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell so you get notified every time a video comes out. And from our homestead to yours, have a blessed day and we'll catch you on the next video. Bye.